hi guys welcome and welcome back to my channel in today's video i'm going to be showing you how to make your own bummer jacket and if that's something that you would like to see definitely keep watching it promises to be another fun and detailed tutorial and i'm sure by the time you're done watching this video you'll be able to make your own bummer jacket if you've not subscribed please don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you don't miss out on the awesome content that i have for you thank you and enjoy the video to make your bummer jacket, you need the following items. You need your pins, you also need your magnet, you need your fabric scissors, so I've got mine right here. You need your measuring tape, you'd also need your zipper and I always advise that you get this metal zippers, the one that open up completely and that you can separate. So as you can see, the teeth is made of metal and um, I talked about it when I was kind of talking about zippers. So definitely you want to get this one and you also want to make sure that it's as long as possible so i recommend getting zippers that as long as 24 inches this one is about 23 inches in length and it works perfectly because my jacket length i was going for is about 24 inches so that works perfectly well for me so as you can see you want to make sure that you measure it and it's like long enough you definitely need your tailor's chuck so excuse my miserable piece of tailor's chuck it literally just fell and broke you need a, you need something called ribbon fabric and this is what the ribbon fabric looks like this is the one i'll be using particularly for this video however they come in different textures but they're really stretchy and they're like cardigan kind of fabric i don't know how to explain it but it is called ribbon fabric as felt so this is another type of it i've got different kinds and i bought this um somewhere in shepherd's bush i can't remember where exactly but it was somewhere in shepherd's bush and you can see the black one the last black one is actually um quite thick and um in comparison to the gray one it's a bit different as well and i've also got it in navy bloom so you definitely want to get ribbon fabric to match you know the fabric that you're using but like i said i'll be using the other black one that i put aside earlier You'd also need your hair stay. So I've got my hair stay here. And if you wanted to make your bomber jacket a bit thicker, you could use fleece lining, but I'll be using air stay. You'd also need your lining. I've got my cotton lining right here. And of course, I've got my fabric. For the fabric, you have two yards, but I recommend having two and a half to three yards. Start off by folding the fabric into two as shown. And then go ahead and fold over so that the folded edge, which is going to be the center back, is on top of the separated edges as shown go ahead and pin it down so you basically want to pin it down from the top all the way to the bottom as shown Draw a top line that is about 3cm from the top. This top line would also function as the shoulder line. So occasionally, I refer to it as the top line or the shoulder line. Starting at the shoulder line, you want to go ahead and mark out the ja desired jacket length vertically plus 1 inch allowance. So for me, the jacket length I'll be using is about 24 inches plus 1 inch sewing allowance will be 25 inches. So you want to measure that out vertically and then you want to square out so that you can cut off the excess fabric. After you've marked out what you need for your jacket length plus the one inch allowance, you can rule a line like I'm doing right now with my pattern master and then cut off the excess. Remember to keep the excess fabric as you'll need that to cut out the sleeves later on. Starting from the shoulder line, Go ahead and mark out the shoulder to bust point measurement vertically and then you want to mark out the shoulder to waist measurement vertically as well. Afterwards, you want to go ahead and mark 2 inches above the shoulder to bust line measurement and this will function as the arm o line. Starting from the top, you should have the shoulder line, the arm o line, the bust line, the waist line and the hem line. Mark half the shoulder measurements plus half an inch on the shoulder and on the arm hole lines respectively and then go ahead and connect the two points with a vertical line as shown. Starting from the folded edge which is the center back, 
mark out the neck width of two three quarter of an inch so that's 2.75 inches and then go ahead and mark out that neck width you also want to mark out the neck depth of one inch and then draw in the neckline as shown mark one inch on the arm or depth line and then go ahead and connect it with the neck width point as shown you basically want to connect it to make the shoulder slant and then afterwards go ahead and draw in the arm or curve as shown as you can see i'm using my pattern master which is my favorite tool and if you would like to shop it check out the links that i have in the description bar of this video or any of my videos on the bust, waist and hem lines, mark a quarter of the bust measurements plus two and a half inches. That's one inch for the sewing allowance and then one and a half inches for ease. Because it's a bomber jacket, you need to have as much ease as possible so that even if you're wearing something inside a t-shirt or a sweater or something, you still have enough space to wear your bomber jacket. After you do that, you want to connect the lines or the markings on the bust line, the waistline and the hemline with a straight ruler and then you want to go ahead and cut out the pieces as shown. Go ahead and add half an inch sewing allowance to the shoulder line or to the top of the shoulder slants. The reason we're doing this is because we've added the sewing allowance to every other part apart from the shoulder and we will need to join the shoulders together. So go ahead and add half an inch on the top like I'm doing right now and then go ahead and cut out the pieces as shown. You want to make sure to cut only the back neckline as you can see. Starting from the center back, which is the folded edge of the fabric, go ahead and mark out one inch outwards towards the center front pieces. The center front pieces are the separated pieces. This will serve as the zip allowance. Afterwards, go ahead and cut out the excess fabric. Carefully separate the back piece from the front pieces and then go ahead and cut out the front neckline. To do this, you want to mark 2 inches downwards as shown and then you want to go ahead and draw in a new neck curve and cut it out as shown. After doing this, the next thing to do will be to cut out the lining as well as the stay. To cut out the lining and the stay, you want to use the main fabric as a template. So you basically want to fold your lining just exactly how we folded the main fabric. You want to fold it into two and then you want to go ahead and place um, the front pieces on the separated edges. You want to make sure it's the separated edges. Place the front pieces on there, pin it in place if necessary and then you want to cut out exactly what you have there. You also want to repeat this for the back piece as well. After cutting out the lining, you basically want to cut out the stay and to do this you want to make sure that the center front pieces are on the separated edges and the center back piece is on the folded edge. You want to make sure that the fold aligns and you want to cut out exactly what you have there. After cutting out the front pieces and the back piece, go ahead and iron on the stay onto the lining. So basically, this is just to give my lining some form of thickness, not too thick, however, not too light as well. Go ahead and open up the back piece and lay it flat on the table so that the right side is facing you. 
then you want to go ahead and place the front pieces on the back piece so for me so that it's easy what i did was i pinned the straight edge which is the center front side of the front pieces together and then when i went ahead to lay it on the back pieces you want to make sure that the right sides of both fabric are facing each other so the right side of the front piece should be facing the right side of the back piece and then you want to go ahead and pin the shoulders together mark out the sewing allowance of half an inch and sew the shoulders together you also want to make sure to pin the sides together mark out the sewing allowance of one inch at the sides and then go ahead and sew the sides together you want to repeat this on the other side as well after sewing the shoulder and the sides together this is what it looks like the next thing to do is to measure out the armhole and the reason we're doing this is so that we can cut the sleeves so you want to go ahead and arrange the jacket as it should be and then measure out the armhole Alright guys, so basically the reason why I recommend having two and a half to three yards is because I ended up having three quarter sleeves as opposed to long sleeves and that's because my fabric was not enough. So I'm working with Ankara and I don't know if you guys know but Ankara fabric is shorter in length in comparison to most fabric. So the next thing to do is to fold your fabric into four so that you can cut out both sleeves at the same time. Mark out your measurements and make sure to add one inch to one and a half inches to the bicep measurements so that you can have enough space you know with your sleeves you can have enough space when you're wearing something else so if you don't know how to draft a sleeve or how to cut out a sleeve you want to check out the detailed video that i've linked in icards above as well as in the description bar so you can know how to cut your sleeves however you also want to make sure that you have enough fabric and your sleeves are long enough So guys, in this case and for this tutorial, your sleeves will be lined and the reason we're doing this is because we're trying to finish up our jacket professionally and I'm teaching you guys the professional method to finish up a bomber jacket and to do this, you need to cut out sleeve lining. So to cut out your sleeve lining, you basically just want to fold your lining the same way you folded for the sleeve, place the sleeves on it, pin it down if you need to and cut out the same exact thing. So yeah, you're basically cutting out, you know, your lining using your sleeves as a template go ahead and join the lining together so you basically want to open up the lining making sure the back piece is facing up and then place the front pieces on it join the shoulder on half an inch and then join the sides on one inch however when joining the sides you want to make sure to leave a gap of about three inches on sewn on one of the sides this gap is very important because when we're finishing up the lining this will be the small space that we'll have to go through and finish up the jacket so that the jacket is all neat and fresh. The next step is to attach the ribbon fabric to the hem of the jacket. To determine the amount of ribbon fabric that you'll need, you basically want to measure your hip or around where your jacket will stop. So for me, I wanted my jacket to stop about around my hip. So I took my hip measurement and then I took away 8 to 10 inches from it. But for me, I did minus 8 inches. So that's hip measurement minus 8 inches that will give you the length you need for your ribbon fabric. So go ahead and cut out the ribbon fabric that you require. Remember to take away 8 or 10 inches from your hip measurement if you're using your hip measurement. And then go ahead head and notch the center of the jacket you also want to notch the center of the ribbon fabric you basically want to notch it at the top and at the bottom because you need it later so you notch the center of the ribbon fabric and you pin the center of the ribbon fabric to the center of the ankara fabric 
After pinning the center of the ribbon fabric to the center of the jacket hem, you basically want to pin the ends as well. So what I like to do is I like to measure two and a half inches from each end inwards. And that's because you want it to be straight at first because it's going to be taking the zip at that area. So you basically want to go ahead and mark two and a half inches starting from the tip and you want to mark that inwards and you want to repeat that at the other end as well. And then go ahead and pin your fabric tightly from the beginning to the two and a half half inches mark after you've pinned your fabric tightly you find that that your um fabric is more than the ribbon that you have however i remember that the ribbon is stretchy so what i like to do is i like to stretch out the ribbon so that i can pin it in position as it should be Sure the ribbon is evenly pinned to the fabric and then you want to make sure that you pin at least twice like you go in and out so that your pin stays secure. After pinning the ribbon to the fabric you want to go ahead and sew on half an inch sewing allowance. After sewing the ribbon to the jacket hem, this is what it looks like and as you can see it's kind of stretchy so it has those tiny pleats going on with it. However, you can see that the beginning is straight for two and a half inches and as well the hand is straight for two and a half inches. So at this point this is what you should look like. The next thing is to notch the center of the lining and you're basically going to make sure that the lining, the right side of the lining is pinned onto the right side of the ribbon and you're going to repeat the same process so as you can see you want to mark two and a half inches on the edge or at the edge and then you want to go ahead and pin the ribbon to the lining while the jacket is right side up pin the center of the ribbon fabric to the center of the hem of the lining and then go ahead and pin the ends as shown and then stretch out the ribbon fabric so that you can pin it to the hem of the jacket lining Go ahead and sew the ribbon to the lining and after sewing this is what it should look like. So guys if you open it up this is what you have and if you set it in position make sure that the lining goes inside the main fabric. This is what it looks like and as you can see it looks nice. It's coming together nicely. Next, we'll be attaching the zipper onto the jacket. For uniformity and to make sure that the zipper ends at the right place, you want to go ahead and fold the ribbon over into two and then notch the center of the ribbon fabric. After notching the center of the ribbon fabric, 
I prefer to draw a line with my chalk so that I know where exactly my zipper should stop and this is so that you can have it uniformed and in alignment okay so guys the next thing to do is to check out the length of your zipper to see if it's long enough remember that we checked it out in the beginning but it doesn't hurt to check it again just to make sure that you have a zipper that is long enough and I recommend that your zipper um, stopper will stop about half an inch below the neckline and then the zipper bottom will stop exactly where the chalk stops however in this case it was shot at the bottom by half an inch which is absolutely fine actually go ahead and mark out the zipper allowance of one inch on both sides of the front pieces as shown and then go ahead and pin the zipper in place if you don't know how to fix a zipper i have a detailed tutorial showing you how i do that and if you check out the link that i've linked in the icons above or in the description bar below you'll see how i do that like i said you want to make sure that the zipper stopper starts about half an inch below the neckline and then the bottom of the zipper stops exactly where the chalk or the middle notch is after pinning the zipper in place, go ahead and sew the zipper to the fabric. Fix the zipper to the other side as shown. After sewing the zipper, go ahead and zip it up and check that everything aligns. It's important that all your joinings, the necklines and everything meet at the right points. Afterwards, go ahead and cover up the zipper and basically what you want to do is you want to bring the lining forward so that the right sides of the lining and the right side of the fabric are facing each other and the zipper is basically sandwiched in between the two fabrics. After that you want to go ahead and pin the sides which is the center front edge. You want to pin it together and then you want to go ahead and sew it in place you want to sew as close as possible to the previous stitch that you have so basically if you look behind you see a stitch already you want to sew as close as possible to that stitch without sewing on the zipper go ahead and close the zipper on the other side as well and like i said you basically want to bring the lining forward so that the right sides of the lining and the right side of the fabric are facing each other you want to pin it in place all the way from the top to the bottom and then you want to go ahead and sew as close to the previous stitch as possible without sewing on the zipper After sewing the zipper closed, this is what it looks like and as you can see, you can now see the stitches on the lining. So at this point guys, this is what the jacket is looking like now. Turn your jacket to the right side and then go ahead and give the jacket a good iron after arranging the jacket and pushing out all the corners that are necessary so you can see that the zipper area tends to stay hidden you want to push that out you want to zip it up and then you want to go ahead and arrange the jacket as it should be so when zipping up the jacket it might be a bit tricky however you want to make sure that there's no thread cut in between the zipper teeth if there's any you want to cut it off and then you want to gently zip the zipper and then iron out the fabric and the lining so that it doesn't get caught when zipping the outfit
all right guys so after zipping it up you want to give it a good iron and this is where we're at with the jackets so the next thing to do is the collar as well as the sleeves but the video was going to be really long so i decided to split it into two and we'll pick up from where we left up next week sunday so guys thank you so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it and i hope it was worth your while if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to leave your comments suggestions and feedback in the comment section below don't forget to give it give it a thumbs up and don't forget to share please with your friends guys if you haven't subscribed please don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you don't miss out on the awesome content that i have for you thank you so much guys for watching this video and i'll see you in my next video on sunday bye